Hi, I'm Norm Abram, and welcome to the new Yankee Workshop, where today we're going to build this shaker blanket chest. It features a deep storage compartment at the top and a couple good-sized drawers down below. It's even painted to look much like the original, which we found at the Shaker Village in Pleasant Hill, Kentucky. That's coming up next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. I know, I promised to show you that blanket chest in a minute. But you can't come all the way to Pleasant Hill, Kentucky without stopping in the trustees building and looking at this spiral staircase. It goes up over three stories. And to think they built it without a compound miter box, without a laser level, and they didn't have any cordless drills. Now over here on the other side of the hallway is one that's identical. That, ladies and gentlemen, is craftsmanship. It's hard to imagine it now, but as recently as 1968, this country lane was a federal highway. But the people here at Pleasant Hill must have some friends in high places, because they were actually able to get the federal government to move it. And now we have the perfect setting for these wonderful old historic buildings. And that's the one I want to go to next, the center dwelling. Greetings, sister. One of the things I like about the interior of this building is the height of the ceilings. They're over 14 feet. And I also notice these arches, very tight arches. And I'm told they're characteristic of the architecture here at Pleasant Hill. Now, there are 40 rooms in this building. And most of them are chuck full of shaker furniture. This one was set up as a retiring room. A couple beds, a rag rug, and a familiar looking chest. Oh, and there it is in the cloak room. A painted blanket chest. It has a couple nice drawers. And underneath this lid, a large storage compartment. And look at this sticker. Seven very best blankets. I better take some notes on this one. Before we get started, I'd like to reassure you that if you'd like to build an exact copy of today's project, that a measured drawing and a materials list is available. And you'll hear more about that before this program ends. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now I'll show you how I built today's project. In order to appreciate the joinery in a piece of furniture such as this, you have to respect the movement of wood. When the humidity goes up, wood expands. When it gets dry, it shrinks. Now this breadboard edge I've installed on the top is decorative and it adds strength to the top. But if I was to glue this joint rather than ho hold it in place with dowels that have slots so that it can move, the top would probably crack if it was to shrink. The same thing holds true in the main part of the chest. The sides have panels with vertical grain and the front and back has panels with the grain running across. Now if I was to glue these joints and secure them permanently, they would probably split. The panels would split. Now the corners could be also joined just using a simple butt joint, no glue, and just nails. But that's not very strong. So what I've done is used a rabbited joint that we see so frequently in shaker pieces of furniture. Now to start the project, I glued up several pine panels. It's one by six and one by eight deselect pine. You've seen me make a lot of these. Almost every furniture project needs panels. The glue has been scraped, I've sanded them down, and now I'm ready to size them. I always make the panels a little wider and longer than what I need. The first thing is to get a nice straight square edge, and that's best done at the joiner. Okay, now I'll square one end and cross cut it to length. Now 
The next milling operation for the side panels is to cut some dados, which will support the bottom shelf, the shelf on which the top draw rides, and the actual bottom of the blanket chest. I will start by making the dado for the bottom shelf. Now I'll readjust the rip fence for the top dado cut. Now I can't use my built-in tape measure because of the thickness of the dado cutter. So I'll use my tape and measure to 22 and a half inches. And finally one more dado in the side for the middle shelf. Next, let's make some rabbits in the side panels. A 3 8 by 3 quarter inch one along the back edge of the panel and a 3 8 by 3 8 inch one along the front edge. Now, I'm going to leave the dado set up exactly as it is, but I'm going to attach this wooden strip to protect my rip fence. It's a nice little thing to have around the shop, and it's just held in place with a couple screws. OK. Now I can run the rip fence over the dado head cutter for varying widths of rabbits. Now first I'm going to set it up for a 3 quarter inch wide rabbit, which will be right at the edge of that blade, and run a sample. Well, that's pretty good. That's as close as I'm going to get to 3 quarters. With an adjustment to the rip fence to make the 3 8 inch dado, which is good on our sample piece, I'm ready to run the front edges. Now there's one more thing to do to the side panels, and that's to make this cutout which forms the legs. So I've taken the panel, clamped it in the workbench, and done the layout first and then attach this straight edge clamp to guide my little circular saw. I'm going to make a plunge cut, which means I'm going to lower the blade through the work and carefully go along the line. You want to take your time because I want a nice crisp cut. Now I can remove the clamp and make these short angled cuts freehand. All right, now I'll just finish off the corners using my trusty old hand saw. Now it's time to do a little assembly. I've put some glue in the dado joint and on the end of the panel. It's okay to glue these because all the grain is running in the same direction. Now just nail it in place using some four penny finish nails in my pneumatic nailer. Now you'll notice that I've rabbited the bottom edge of this top panel that's the bottom of the chest and that's to receive the quarter inch plywood back that goes behind the drawers that I'll be putting on a little bit later. Okay, next piece to go in is the bottom shelf. We'll just slip that into the dado and also nail it in place. Okay, for the next step, I'm going to flip this over to be a bit a bit easier to locate the front edge of the shelf. Now, the shelf that supports the drawer, the top drawer, is actually a piece of plywood that I had here at the shop. You could use a pine panel, but since you don't see it, it really doesn't make much sense. Now, because this is plywood, I have to treat it a little differently. 
I'm not going to put glue along the entire joint because that gets me into a cross grain gluing situation. But I will put a little glue at the front edge of the plywood panel and that will keep it fixed. The rest of it will be held with just a couple nails. Okay, now let's flip it back around again so that the back side of the chest is facing up and we'll put on the quarter inch plywood back. Just a little bit of glue along the edge of each shelf and the side panels. And now the piece of quarter inch plywood which I'll just tack in place with some one inch brads. All right, now we'll give it a check for squareness, just using a framing square. Let's pull over just a little bit. That's good. Now there's one more piece for the back of the blanket chest, and that's this solid pine panel. And I made it out of pine because you're going to see it. Now I sized it the same way as I did with the side panels, but I've made a little rabbit joint down at the bottom edge, and that's so that it will lap over the bottom of the chest. And that's so that if I have any shrinkage of this bottom panel, it won't have a gap along the edge back here. Now remember, no glue, just a few nails, maybe three or four in each corner, and a couple little brads along the bottom edge. Okay, now I'm just going to flip the whole case over so I can put the front piece on. Let's take a look at the prototype. Beneath this panel on the front is a style, and it goes all the way down to the floor, becoming part of the foot. Now to make that piece, I'll start out with some stock that's a little bit longer and wider than what I need. And I'll wrap it one edge to fit over the side panel. Well now I'll just bring the pieces over to my power miter box and square up the top end. All right, first we'll check the fit up at the top. And that's good. And now I'll mark the bottom for the exact length, just using my square as a guide. And now we can trim that. All right, that completes the layout of the style. It starts up at the top to be one inch wide, down along the side of the drawer openings. And then when it reaches the top of the bottom rail, it angles down to the bottom edge. And the width right here is two and a half inches, the same as the side, and it tapers down to one and a half inches. Well, now I can cut the other one, and then we'll install them. Now here on the styles, I can use a little bit of glue, and I'll just use some one-inch brads to fasten it together. Well, now this is the easy rail just a couple straight cuts on each end. Now where the rail meets the style, I need an angle cut. And I want to know what that angle is, so I'm going to use my bevel gauge. But if I try to slide it in here, it hits the style and I don't get a true reading. So I'm going to use a little scrap as a spacer, and that way I can set my gauge exactly to the right angle. 
Now over here at the miter box, I put one leg of the bevel gauge against the fence and then pivot the saw around and align it with the other leg until it's perfectly parallel. And that's pretty good. Looks like about 40 degrees. Now I'll make a cut on one end of the rail. Okay, that fits pretty good. Now I'll mark it for length. And I'm going to leave it a little bit long. It's always easier to trim it back later. Okay, just a little bit of glue on this rail, and I'll nail it in place with some four penny finish nails. Now, one more thing I want to add a couple cleats so that as I pull the bottom drawer out, it won't rock. Well, now I'll just sand everything smooth and flush using my random orbit sander, which doesn't leave any swirl marks even when I sand across opposing grains. Oh boy, I got real lucky when I picked up the boards that I needed to make the top for the chest. I ended up with some nice pine boards with very straight grain and a color that matches pretty well. And what's nice about boards like this is they tend not to warp and twist, so it'll make a good top. I also have a couple pieces set up here cut from the same board to make the breadboard edges. The first milling operation for the top is to make this tongue on the end of the large panel, and I'll do that on the table saw. Now the next step is to make a corresponding groove in the breadboard edge. And the trick here is to have a groove that's snug and perfectly centered. If it isn't centered, you may have to sand some off of the edge or the top to make it nice and even. I have a little trick to help do that. I set the stack dado up so that it's a little bit narrower than the finished groove that I need. But I very carefully align the rip fence so that the amount of material remaining is just right. So when I make one pass through on one side and then flip the edge around, I'll end up with a groove that's perfectly centered. Watch. Oh, that's perfect, just what I want. Now the breadboard edge is secured to the top with some quarter inch dowels. And they actually go all the way through the top. So over here, I've set up my top, clamped the edges in place, and slipped a piece of scrap underneath so that as I drill through, I'll minimize any tear out. And I want to elongate the holes on each end so that the top can expand and contract freely. And I'll just use my drill. All right, now I've clamped everything back together again to set the dowels. And what I want to do here is just put a little bit of glue at the top edge of the dowel so that it'll be held in place, but not so that it'll be glued all the way through and restrict movement of the top. I'll just That should do it. I want to sand down those dowels on the top, but not until they're dry. So we'll start working on our drawer construction. Now, both drawers are different sizes, but all the construction details are the same. The front is a piece of 3 quarter inch pine, and I've rabbited it on all four edges so that it'll overlap the face frame. We'll start making that rabbit over here at the table saw, which is still set up with the dado head cutter.
Next, I'm going to make a quarter inch wide by quarter inch deep dado in the side pieces and along the bottom edge of the front piece to accept the plywood bottom. The next step is to put a dado right in the edge of the side piece, and that'll help secure the back. The sides of the drawer are joined to the front with dovetail joinery, and that's a good choice because it's perfect. It'll hold it together, it'll never come apart. Now, historically, dovetails were cut with little dovetailing saws and hand chisels, but today there's a variety of dovetailing jigs available that you use in combination with your router. This one right here came with a manual of over 100 pages and a videotape, and the best way to learn how to use it is practice on lots of scrap pieces of wood. Now what I've done is clamped the side piece in position and adjusted these guide fingers to the layout that I want. I've also installed a collar on my router and a dovetailing bit. The collar simply follows the pins and for the first pass I'll cut the tails in the side pieces. Okay, now I've made a couple adjustments to the jig, and I've installed one of the draw fronts horizontally, and now I'm ready to cut the pins. The last thing that I have to do before I can assemble the drawers is round over the front edges. And to do that, I'm going to use my router table, which is set up with a quarter inch rounding over bit. The first step in the assembly process of the drawers is to put a little bit of glue on all the mating surfaces and just spread it out with a brush. And I can just slip it together and tap it in place with my mallet. Okay, next I'm ready for the back, but first I'll put a little glue in the dado joint. Now I'll just secure the back in place with a couple brads. Now I'll just slip the bottom piece of plywood in. Now I'll just check the draw for square using the framing square. It's got to rack just a little bit. Okay, and now I'll secure it along the back edge with some brads. All right, now that's nice and smooth. Now I'm ready to hinge the top to the chest. Now to attach the top, I've used a 30 inch brass plated piano hinge. Nothing fancy, just surface mounted, should be more than enough to handle the top. Now let's get to finishing this piece. Now for the inside of the chest where blankets might be stored, I'm using a water soluble satin polyurethane and that'll do a good job protecting the wood. 
Now for the exterior surfaces of the chest, the final coat is going to be a color coat latex enamel. But before I can put that on, I'm putting on a coat of primer. And I've added a little tint to the primer so that the final coat will cover a little bit better. And now the color coat. It's an acrylic latex enamel. Kind of a nice old-timey brick color. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.